I'm Tatum Skipper and welcome to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back. Here today in downtown Chipley at the Washington County Public Library, we got a call last week. We found out that there was going to be a guy in town that we would probably want to have a conversation with, and we said absolutely when we found out who it was. Here with me today is Ted DiBiase, uh, known for a long time as the million dollar man in the world of professional wrestling. Um, Ted, first of all, thanks for taking the time to visit with us, and thanks for um, uh, acceding to our, uh, our request for an interview. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure, believe me. Um, well, you know, I got, I'm going to have to go for the meat. I'm going to have to go whatever, for what everybody's going to want to know about, and that's the wrestling aspect of it. And then we'll go on to your personal life after sure. that. How about that? Sure. Um, how did you get involved in the world of professional wrestling? Um, I was I raised in it. Uh, my stepfather, Mike DiBiase, uh, came into my life when I was five years old. He and my mother uh, married when I was five. And Mike was not only a professional wrestler, but a national amateur wrestling champion out of the University of Nebraska. Storied career there. And um, of course, at five, I didn't know any of those things. Uh, but this guy comes into my life. And, you know, uh, DiBiase is an Italian name. And uh, family is everything in, in the Italian community. And, uh, you know, so he gave me that love and my mother as well and my, you know, my older brother. and. And then my mom and he had a, a child, my younger brother. And, but he was a big influence in my life. I mean, I, you know, I talk about it all the time. The, we're growing up in a, uh, in a society today where we have a lot of fatherless children. And I really had a break because I really had a, a genuine uh, role model that I, could, uh, that I could look up to. So that's how, I mean, that's, you know, wanting to be like him, I wanted to play football and wrestle. So that was, that was it. That was the alert. Now, did you wrestle um, in school? Well, I started to, uh, but we let, you know, uh, my, my dad was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, and went to the University of Nebraska. And, uh, Corn fed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, and I, this may have changed, but at one time he was like one of four athletes in the history of the school to have lettered seven or more times and like four years of football, three in wrestling with a national title. And, um, now you're a big guy. Was, was, obviously he's your stepfather, but was yeah. he a big guy himself? Well, he was, he was real husky guy, but he was not, you know, he wasn't tall. He was built like a fire plug. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like a, had a 22 inch neck, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like almost, like almost like no neck and traps and just, you know, great big thighs on him. You know, he was like 5'11". <laughs> Perfect <laughs> for wrestling. Yes. But, uh, uh, so, you know, Nebraska was, uh, his home and, uh, that's where we grew up. Um, so you didn't ever, did you get into any well, high school sports at the, all? Uh, I started, uh, again, my love was wanting to be like him, so it was football and wrestling. And I wrestled as a freshman. Uh, I went to a, uh, it, was an all it was a Catholic all-boy prep school, Creighton Prep. And uh, uh, unbelievable football teams there. I was like the, my freshman class was the fourth class in a row to go undefeated in football. And, uh, but, and I wrestled for that year. And then that summer, we moved back to Texas. Uh, back then, was, wrestling was very regional. It was done on a very regional basis. And it, we called them territories. And we went back to Texas. And that was the summer that my dad actually had a heart attack and died. And, uh, uh, and so as a result of his death, uh, my mother was forced to move back to Arizona in this little town uh, in southeastern corner of the state, Wilcox, Wilcox, Arizona. His, um, I mean, that's three traffic lights. It's it's a it's a very small town. I mean, Chipley's a metropolis compared to Wilcox. Right. And uh, uh, I landed there, and uh, that was the uh, that was it as far as wrestling went. But I, I played football there. I I uh, graduated from that high school, uh, and uh, I actually I had signed a scholarship to play football at the University of Arizona, and uh, was watching TV one day, and the wrestling program the tape basically out of Texas where I had left three years prior uh, came on the local television and they were coming to Tucson. So I went to see these guys who I hadn't seen since my father's death. And um, as a result of that, I uh, made a recruiting trip back to 
West Texas State, as it was known then, which is now West Texas A&M in the Panhandle, just south of Amarillo. And uh, that was about all it took for me to get back around that, those people that I knew in that atmosphere. And I was smart enough to know that, you know, coming out of a little town like that, the fact that I had gotten a, a scholarship to Division I uh, college was a good deal. But, you know, uh, I wasn't sure what my chances would be at pro. And, and I, I was right because <laughs> one of my coaches told me one day, he said, DBS, he said, you got a lot of heart, but we're going to have to start timing you with a sundial. <laughs> so I guess I won't be playing any pro football. Now, you were a big guy in high school and college? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, I played. I, mean, I, I know you're tall, but did you have the bulk? Well, I, you know, I, I, I played college football at about 200 and, uh, and 30, 35 pounds. Okay. But then uh, when I got into wrestling, you know, uh, my my game weight ended up being about 260. So, but I wasn't, I didn't have that kind of size and bulk when I was in college. I'm sure that when you look at what UFC is now, um, not only do you realize that there's a whole lot of money that probably didn't end up in the right pockets at the time you were, you were wrestling competitively, <laughs> but that um, it's a different world. It's a different world. Many people uh, 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 denigrated what became WWE and professional wrestling as fake or a show, any number of adjectives, the smart ones realized that if you were not an athlete, if you were not in shape, if you did not commit your whole being to training and staying in that shape that yes. you needed to be, you not only could get hurt, but you could get killed pretty easily. Saw guys land in all kinds of ways, and yeah. there were a lot of real injuries, obviously. Oh, gosh. So I'm not so sure that it didn't take more of an athlete to do what you did than what it does nowadays to fight. Well, you know, uh, and again, I, you know, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of UFC, um, uh, but I am. I mean, I, I, I watch those guys, and you, obviously, you have got to be tremendously dedicated and in shape to do that as well. Uh, and maybe missing a little bit of the gray matter because I mean, these well, guys, no matter if you win, you still get hurt. Well, yeah, and it's it's almost like it's a it's it's a it's a legalized street fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and basically, basically, it's not far from that. Yeah. But uh, but but pro wrestling, you know, that's been the, the biggest issue that I have with people who uh, talk about wrestling being fake is that, uh, well, OK, it is sports entertainment. It's always been sports entertainment, even back uh, in the early days, because a lot of people say, well, it's definitely sports entertainment now. But way back when, no, way back when it was still sports entertainment, but the way that that it was the way the business was handled back then was. It was kind of like magic. You know magic's not real. You know that you know you can't really make an elephant disappear. It's an illusion, but you don't know how they do it. And that's the intrigue. And so to keep the intrigue, you know, uh, in wrestling, it's like, okay, we know that when people watch this, you know, if they've ever been in a real fight or they've been an athlete and they watch this for long enough, they're going to start going, wait a minute. And they see things and they go, now, why did that guy do that? It's kind of like if somebody grabs somebody by the, the hair and runs them all the way across the ring. Well, why'd he go? <laughs> You know, he might have pulled his hair out, but if he didn't want to go, he didn't have to go. Sure. And again, so you figure it out. But it was almost like, you know, keeping people in a suspended in disbelief. It's like going to a movie. You know, a movie is, is a show, but we have really good actors that can present it as realistically as, as they can, then you're drawn into it. And that's what we tried to do with wrestling. And then finally, you know, Vince basically just came out and said, look, we, yeah, we're sports entertainment, so what? And but the athleticism needed uh, is, is I mean, I've you know, I played uh, high school and college football and I had to be as much of an athlete as a wrestler and even even more so in terms of cardiovascular, uh, you know, uh, you know, you go out and get in the ring and, and wrestle somebody for, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour. And I've done a lot of those. Uh, you've got to you know, you got to be in shape. Well, and a lot of movement. You're running around. You're yeah. doing things that you wouldn't yeah. ordinarily do in yeah. collegiate wrestling. But I'm glad you mentioned um, acting because we almost worship actors on the silver screen, but <laughs> we didn't recognize the acting ability along with that athleticism, right. along with that cardiovascular and just being in shape, being being athletes that you guys did and, they, and that they still do. Um, did you ever make any real money? Did you did, yeah, you, did well, you get wealthy or did you yeah, get comfortable? Well, when uh, you know, when I was, you know, when back when it was territorial, when it was regional, uh, I was like, a t I was the top guy. And the place where I spent most of my time was called the Mid-South, which was basically Louisiana, Oklahoma, 
Arkansas, Mississippi. Um, and the promoter was a guy named Bill Watts. And uh, Mid-South was a, a great territory, a big territory, a lot of miles. And I did very well, and I saved some money. You know, did it make me independently wealthy? No. Uh, but it was very good living. And again, it's, it's, not, it's not what you make, it's what you save. Uh, but when I went to the WWE, which was the WWF at that time, mm -hmm. uh, then a lot of things changed, and I was I was making much much better money. Uh, you know, did I become a multimillionaire? No, the Million Dollar Man was a character on television. Uh, did I do a lot better, and do I have a pretty good retirement? Uh, yeah, but you know, based on today's economy, who knows? Well, you mentioned retirement. Was there a, a, a retirement plan set up for you guys? No, you we, to do it no, we're you know, we're independent contractors and. Uh, Basically, uh, like if you are an independent contractor for any other business, uh, if you're hurt on the job, then they'll take care of you. But anything outside of the job, uh, you're on your own. And so, but you know that going in, it's kind of like, you know, I hear stories all the time. Well, you know, the WWE should do this, it should do that. And, you know, uh, you know uh, why isn't there a players union and da, 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 da. And I said, but you know what, you know going in what the score is. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to play the game, don't get in it. 